myself, plus a couple of the Terror Hawks guys, Steve Begg and Mark Harris, we worked on Aliens at Pinewood Studios, and that was uh, probably the best thing I did in the 80s. Uh, that kind of gets us back to 1982, so yeah. I'll let Steve say a few words and then we'll get on with the pictures. Well, I, when we finished on Terror Hawks, I worked with John and TV commercials, also on Aliens and various projects like that. And then I moved back up north, mainly to take some time off, um, and was asked by somebody I'd been at art school with, could I make a model for an ad for the British Telecom ad? And I said yes, and the whole thing just snowballed, so I ended up doing my own model making company for about 10 or 12 years, and doing really well, and living literally three minutes away from where I'd grown up. Then wanted to move more into writing, which I'd always wanted to do, and eventually set up uh, a production company with my wife, and we for 10 years ran a film and TV production company and made two feature films, developed a load of things in between which never got made, which is incredibly frustrating. <laughs> um, so although you might have two films, there's not the, there's the films in between which you've not seen. Um, and so eventually that folded, uh, and I'm now a novelist. I'm writing thrillers at the moment. I'm still kind of dabbling in TV. Um, the, the novel which I have out next April um, is actually based on something I developed with Granada TV. So I'm very much tuned towards writing and, and writing books, but still want to see films come from those books. So I think, shall we? I think, I think you can. Steve and I, just I'll put this, throw this in. Steve and I have known each other since we were about this year. We grew up in the north of England in Huddersfield and we worked together for our for, sort of formative years in yeah. our 20s. And we've been yapping away all weekend because we haven't seen each other for a long months. time. So it's been, yeah. it's been but the stuff we're going to show you first, we were yeah. just completely obsessed by by the old Anderson series. So that one, you'll see straight away there's some probe all over that um, from Thunderbirds. Um, it was the kind of thing that we were doing quickly, uh, as quickly in a way as what Alan was saying. And cheaply, well. and cheaply it's, it's got the Gerda Bridge kits, the Foot Bridge kits, all the usual airfix bits, and the Saturn V rocket, but it was really our way of saying this is how Sun Probe looked, we wanted something that we could show to Jerry if we ever got to meet him, that we could do that kind of thing, the same approach. Here, um, the, 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 we joined the production of Down two months in. At that stage, it was structured very much like Mike was saying it was structured at Sunday 21. Stephen Begg, or I, Ian Schoons was the SFX director. Stephen Begg was doing very much what Mike Trim did. He was drawing storyboards and designing the craft. Concepts. Concepts. They were then passed to the model shop. They would draw patterns, or would make patterns from technical drawings, proper blueprints. That's how all the main craft had been made, and they were done before we got there. When we did get there, they looked like this shot here, and it really they looked like shop window display models, and we knew that they weren't going to work, but we kept a low profile because we couldn't start imposing our views. We were also, um, quite, we were also really busy working on other models, and yes. these were being finished by other members of the That's team. That's right. And it was a small team, there was only five or six of us, I think, in the workshop and one supervisor. So it was very busy. Everything had to be done between September and Christmas because I think that was the kind of three-month period. Uh, and in, in fact, you know, Steve Bed knew they weren't right. Mark Harris, and, uh, but Jerry had no idea because he was in the office, you know, producing the series. And word must have got back to Jerry that there was a problem. And, then, um, and what we were basically doing was we were called. We were called up to Jerry's office. <clears throat> and he said, um, he sat us down and said, these models are not looking right. Can you salvage them? Can you do anything with them? And we said, well, we can't change anything about the shape and add things on because it won't look right. But we'll try and re-artwork them and make them look as much like what I thought at the time, sky warm as possible. So what we did was we stripped them right back down uh, to, the, to the bare colours and then re-artworked them and stuck small bits of detail on, just like Alan was saying we used to do in the old series. And that was really the way we transformed all the main craft. Um, that's a shot that was taken of me and Jerry. I think it was in the Daily Mail. They, they came round. Both looking very happy. Yes, yeah, with this, this big finished model. Um, and there was a photo feature, I think, in the Daily Mail. I never actually saw it. But that photograph, I think, was taken by uh, the Daily Mail. As we progressed into the series proper, uh, as you may be aware, Ian Screws left and Stephen Begg took over as special effects director. At that point, all the sketches and designing really stopped. 
we knew that we could design, as we'd sort of shown in the stuff we did beforehand before we joined the program. So literally, we were just left to get on with it. We were designing nearly everything that we made. There were very few drawings done, other than real thumbnail sketches, scribbles, literally. But most of the time, we were literally making things up as we went along. And it was a, a conversation between Steve yeah. and Edward. There'd be an episode with a spacecraft, and it would be like, well, it would be something like this. I like the shot in Empire Strikes Back. Just do something like that, and we'd do a thumbnail sketch, and that would be a case of just getting on with it. Yeah. 